Why do I feel like I'm not worthy? This is deep. Dr. Vaughn, you're gonna make me cry. Dr. Vaughn, you're gonna make me cry. Why do I feel like I'm not worthy? You get to the top of the mountain, you can look out, you can see very clearly what the view is like, what the experience is like, and only you can experience it. You, you can ask people what it's like and they can tell you, but then it clarity is something you have to experience. So number one, clarity is something that is a personal experience. You have to experience the clarity. So <laughs> WTF, WLS, DRV. What the fuck does this have to do with weight loss surgery, Dr. Vaughn? So you can say, hey, look at me, I lost 100 pounds. Hey, look at me, I joined the challenge and I feel so much better. Hey, look at me, um, I survived weight loss surgery. But the other person has to experience it for themselves. Does that make sense? You say, mom, you know, you need to lose 100 pounds. I did weight loss surgery. You need to do weight loss surgery with me. And mom says, well, you go first. Maybe I'll do it. I'll see, whatever, right? It's because they have to experience the clarity for themselves. Clarity is a personal experience. That's number one. You can tell people, but clarity is something you have to experience. So he talks about the hindrances, you know, uh, the first hindrance is really, I mean, it's really a, all about obesity, right? It's the sensual desire. It's things that you taste, touch, see, smell, hear, and feel that you love, that you want. So the first hindrance is like, for example, you're climbing up the mountain towards clarity and you see this restaurant off to the side. And there's beautiful people there enjoying this. Uh, amazing looking food, the food smells amazing, the drinks look amazing, the noise, you know, you remember restaurants, the noise you hear in the distance of people talking, having fun, and you're like, what's going on over there? The second you go off and say, hey, what's, what's going on over here at this restaurant? You're off your path to clarity, right? You're off the path to clarity. It's a hindrance that's essential, the feelings, the things you love. And then, and then if you stay at that restaurant too long, it becomes an obsession. You stay at the restaurant too long, like, you know, I'll order another dish, I'll have a dessert, I like it here, the people here are pretty, They're, it's fun, you know, I've, I've had a little bit too much to drink. Uh, uh, and then you, you help go home, and then the next day you go up the mountain to Clarity and you go, oh, look, there's a restaurant again, let's go back to the restaurant. Now you're stuck there, you're always stuck at that level. That's a hindrance. So he goes through these different hindrances. The second one is aversion, the ones where you don't, you don't do it because you don't like it. Like you wanna take a hike, but it starts to rain and you go, I don't like the rain. But a gardener, I love the rain. It's been raining most of the day and then sunshine in the evening. It's beautiful. Or you say, you know, you, you start on your road and the road is rocky. And you go, I don't like a rocky road. <laughs> I, I love rocky road ice cream, but I don't like a, you know, my, it's hard for me to walk. It's not, you know, that's the aversion hindrance, okay? So the last three are mental hindrances, monkey mind, stuff like that. But I wanna talk about his solution, which is rain. Rain wash away my hindrances. All right, rain stands for recognize, accept, investigate, and then non-identity. So let's do the first one, recognize. First of all, you gotta recognize you got a problem. You have to recognize you have a hindrance. Um, when, you're getting, when you're overweight, and you guys all have friends who are super heavy. You know people that are super heavy and that their health is not good and they still won't do anything about it. Put a three in the comment section. If you know somebody who is obese and not healthy and will not do anything about it, right? That's recognized. They'll say things like, I'm not that big. Um, it's okay. We're, uh, I'll start the diet on Monday. I'm just big bone, right? That's the recognized. They don't even recognize that it's an issue. Okay. Which takes us to number two, accept. Accept, watch this, accept. 
you have to accept that you have a problem. You have to, alcoholics, when they go sober, they accept the fact that they have a problem. <laughs> Dr. V is unwilling to accept <laughs> that I have a problem. <laughs> but alcoholics, they recognize they have a problem, then they accept the fact that they have a problem. Your friend, the ones, you guys putting a three in the comment section right now? Why won't they do something, Dr. Vong? They don't accept that they have a problem. Yes, you're right, Robin. Yes, Tess. Yes, Rosemary. I understand I'm overweight. I know um, I need to do something about my weight. I need to do something about my weight. I'll start something on Monday. I'll join the challenge next month. You know, I don't get my stimulus check until the, darn it, I didn't get it until the second. And it was closed. It was still open on the second. You still could have gotten in. Dr. Vong left it open. See, they're not willing to accept that they, that they need to change. Um, you know, mom, you need to have surgery with me. Uh, I know I'm big, but she, she's not, you go first. Husband says, you go first. <laughs> they're not yet willing to accept that they have a problem, okay? Number three, investigate. Okay, so why do I feel this way? Why do I feel this way? You have to investigate it. Why do I feel like I'm not worthy? This is deep. Dr. Vaughn, you're gonna make me cry. Dr. Vaughn, you're gonna make me cry. Why do I feel like I'm not worthy? I promise you, all of you who put the three in the comment section, your friends, your loved ones, they don't feel like they're worth saving. They don't feel like they're worth rescuing. They don't feel like their life has meaning and purpose. They are just trying to get by. They're not living. They are alive, but they are not living. And they, they just, aren't willing to investigate it because it takes effort. It takes effort. When you're, when you can't walk outside to get the mail, when you can't play with your kids, when you have to keep 10 pills straight, when you are lightheaded and dizzy because your hypertension medicines are too much, when, you're, when your blood sugar's bottoms out because you haven't seen your doctor in, since the coronavirus started, you start to feel helpless, but not just helpless, but hopeless, hopeless, right? Because it takes work to investigate. It takes work to investigate. Number four, non-identity. You have to understand, like, I feel this way, but it's not me. I have this hindrance, but it's not me. I have fat, but I'm not fat. Just like I have fingernails, but I'm not fingernails. I have fat, I am not fat. I have fat, I have fingernails, but I am not fingernails. It's non-identity. I have despair. I feel despair. I feel worthlessness. I feel hopelessness, but I'm not hopeless. I'm not, I feel helplessness, but I'm not helpless. I feel frustrated, but I am capable. I am not, I am not downtrodden. This is the American dream. There are people out there who behave like a racist, but I am not defined by their racism. I am not defined by the color of my skin. I'm not defined by my Vietnamese wide nose. I'm not defined by the color of my skin. I have skin, I'm not skin. <laughs> 
non-identity, right? Um, I, I like food, but it's not to die for, right? I, I get so frustrated at people. Comment if you've seen this happen on one of my posts. They swear to goodness they love food more than me. And then I'll say something like, you know, um, have you ever had Japanese eggplant? They'll go, I've never had, no, I've never had Japanese eggplant. Or have, do you know what this is? This is jackfruit. Have you ever, what's that? What's jackfruit? What's rambutan? What's, look, hey, bitch, I thought you said you love food more than me. And they'll say, I've never, I've never tried snapper. I've never tried uh, you know, mahi mahi. I've never, I've never learned how to cook fish. I thought you liked food more than me. What is that? I've never had Swiss chard. What, Dr. Vong? You can roast beets and you can eat the leaves off of the beets? What? See? Back to number one. How do you go? So, rain is nice. But here's Dr. V's tip. How do I get started, Dr. V? How do I get started? Tip number one was recognize, right? But in order to recognize, you have to get clear. But Master Xi says, you're on the mountain to get in clear. How do I get, get clear if I'm getting these hindrances? And then Dr. V says, in order to recognize, you have to be clear. Well, what do you think happens when you overeat on food? When you eat a bunch of, um, when you eat a meal that's too big, when you eat too much sweets, what happens y'all? What happens after Thanksgiving? What do y'all do? Are y'all ready to go get them? No, you're in a food coma. You're in a food coma, right? That's what happens. That's why you're drowsy at two in the afternoon or three in the afternoon because you ate too much at lunch. You ate too much junk. You understand that you have a food fog. This is the Dr. V bonus tip five or whatever. You have a food fog. What you are eating gives you a brain fog. There is a literal brain fog. You, we, we can put you in a PET scan and show your brain light up when you eat sugar and junk and you go into a food coma and you can't think straight you literally one one you have the chemicals jacking up your brain two you're eating junk so you're not giving your body and when I say your body I mean your brain what it, the nutrients it needs to work. You're not giving the muscles the nutrients it needs to work. You're not giving your brain the nutrients it needs to fire synapses. And then you're clouding it with a bunch of junk. Does that make sense? Junk food equals brain fog. Processed food equals brain fog. How do I get started, Dr. Vong? How do I recognize? You got to stop it with the junk. What's the first, let's say your house is on fire. Dr. Vong, my house is on fire. What do you do? You call the fire department, okay? Fire department comes over. What do they do? Well, Dr. Vong, they, they put a fire hose. They put water on my house. Yeah, they spray water on your house. Do they spray kerosene? Do they spray gasoline? What would you think if you call, your house is on fire, you call the fire department and the firemen come over and they say, we got this, ma'am. We got this, ma'am. And they start pouring more kerosene on the house. What would you say? You would say, not my house? No, 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 not my house. You put water on my house. You don't put kerosene on my house. Now, what if the firefighters looked like they came out of a calendar? <laughs> They're all shirtless. <laughs> They're all 25 years old, muscles, and they're short, shirtless. And you know, they had those yellow suspenders. I don't know why, but they're always wearing yellow suspenders and a hard hat. <laughs> and they're topless. 
and they go, ma'am, and they're flexing their muscles. Ma'am, we've got this. We're professionals. Here's more kerosene on the fire. Would you say, oh, no, no, no. You look so good. You go ahead and dump kerosene on my house. You would say, what? No. No, Mr. Muscles. No, Mr. Six Pack. After you run your finger over their six pack. <laughs> Let me make sure this is real first. And no, but no, no. <laughs> right you would say no put water spray water on my burning house this is no different than your co-worker your cousin your best friend who says yeah but yeah but yeah but I had a hard day yeah but I deserve this yeah but it's been rough and you have to say Karen Quit pouring kerosene on your on your fire. Your house is on fire. Quit pouring kerosene on it. Oh, but didn't you see? It's got a new package. It's got a new label. It's got a new... It's 20% more free. It's buy one, get one free. What? No, 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 we're done with that. No, we're done with that. Right? So, how do I get started, Dr. Vong? Number one, how do I recognize Dr. Vong? You gotta quit putting the junk in your body because it causes this brain fog. And it weakens your willpower. You'll get easily distracted. You start up the road. I'm on my journey, Dr. Vong. I'm on my weight loss surgery journey, Dr. Vong. Look at me go. Ooh, a restaurant. Ooh. <laughs> a a taco truck. <laughs> no, no, Karen, keep going, keep going. No, no, that's a, that's, I haven't seen that taco truck. <laughs> that taco truck is like, is run by a bunch of topless firemen, Dr. Vong. <laughs> no, Karen, keep going. <laughs> but they're raising money for their taco truck. <laughs> Just let, let me have one bite, Dr. Vong. Let me have one. <laughs> I learned something new last week. Blonde Christine says, we call it doing a line. <laughs> like, what do you mean, call it doing a line? You, you line up Oreos. You do a line of Oreos. It's like a cocaine. Oreos is like cocaine for the obese person. <laughs> you do a line of Oreos. <laughs> but they're vegan, Dr. Vong. Oreos are vegan. <laughs> oh, man, it's funny. But you do one and it adds to the brain fog. It weakens your willpower. It confuses you. It adds a chemical. It gets you distracted. No, no, I deserve it. I've had a hard day. Listen, you can't think like that. You have survived all of your hard days at this point. How do I recognize Dr. Vong? You gotta stop with the junk. All right, all right, Dr. Wong, I'll stop the junk. Oh, shit, I'm fucking fat. I'm obese. I'm killing myself. Accept it. It shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be this way. It is this way. It is this way. It shouldn't be this way. I shouldn't be this way. I was athletic when I was younger. I was in a bad marriage. I was abused. My daddy left. Okay. You get on the scale. How much do you weigh, Karen? I'm 280. Okay. Get off the scale. But it shouldn't be this way. I had it hard. I had it hard growing up. I was picked. I was teased. Okay, Karen. Get back on the scale. How much does it say? Get back on the scale. Oh, it's still 280. Oh, it's still 280? You mean all those excuses you gave didn't make you lose weight at all? Just let's try this again. Get off the scale. She gets off the scale. She goes, I've been stressed out. I hate my job. My boss is mean. My husband is passive aggressive. My kids who stress me out. Okay, Karen, get back on the scale. Get back on the scale. What's it weigh? What's it say? It still says 280? It still, still says 280. So saying all that stuff didn't make you lose weight at all? It didn't help your health at all? Fuck, I gotta accept this, huh? I gotta accept it, huh, Dr. V? Yep. Yep. 
it, it just it just is what it is okay okay I gotta accept it I gotta accept it okay I'm 280 I'm diabetic I'm short of breath all right let's investigate let's investigate what do we do dr. Vaughn what do we do dr. Vaughn I'm gonna go I'm gonna go tear my boss another I'm gonna rip my I'm gonna rip my son another hole I'm going to you know tell my best you know rip my best friend another page I'm gonna tell my mom how, how mean she's been oh hold on Karen hold on Karen <laughs> no dr. Vaughn I gotta go investigate uh, how about we sit down and meditate what dr. Vaughn how is meditation and investigation, Dr. V? You, you got you gotta you gotta meditate, Karen. Why? How? No, no, I gotta go rip them another, Dr. V. No, 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 no. You gotta meditate. Emotions high, intellect low. You can't see. You you open that pantry, and it's full of junk food. And then you look at Dr. V and you go. Dr. Vong, I don't have any junk food in my pantry. And I'll go, what's that? That's all junk food right there. That's all processed food. Mac and cheese ain't junk food, Dr. V. Y yeah, that mac and cheese. And a craft mac and cheese. That's a junk. That's that's not even real food. Oh, but my son, my son's coming. My grandbabies are coming up. What, what do you want me to cook? I'm a busy mom, don't you know? Ah, sit down and meditate. Sit down and meditate. Sit down and meditate. Okay. All right, fucker. All right, skinny Asian fucker. I'm going to sit down and meditate. Um, I suck at this. I suck at meditation. I suck at meditation. Um, I'm quiet for 30 seconds. Bing. I wake up, come out of meditation. I look in my pantry. How the fuck that mac and cheese get there? How that, how that mac and cheese get in there? Who put that mac and cheese in there? Oh, so now you see the mac and cheese? Now you see the mac and cheese. How did that happen? Dr. Vong did some weird Ju Jedi mind trick on me just then. I I didn't see the mac and cheese. I meditated, quiet my brain, and then I came back and I saw a bunch of junk food in my pantry. How the fuck that happened? Who, who put that there? Wait a minute, Wait, I put that there? I do my grocery shopping? No, it's gotta be my mom's fault. Get back on the scale, Karen. <laughs> Still says 280. Must not be my mom's fault. <laughs> Back off the scale like <laughs> Non-identity. Non-identity. All right. All right. I'm anxiety ball. I have anxiety, but I'm not anxious. I have stress, but I am not stress. Non-identity. How do I do this, Dr. Vaughn? Why don't you start a gratitude journal? Who has time to fucking gratitude journal, Dr. V? <laughs> it, it, it only takes a minute. What? Who has time? Who has time to? It, it's only 30 seconds. I'm grateful and thankful for. I'm grateful and thankful for. Oh, okay, I guess I'll try it. I'm grateful and thankful for today. I'm grateful and thankful for Dr. V, fucker. I'm grateful and thankful for this challenge. I'm grateful and thankful for my deadbeat husband. I'm grateful and thankful for this leaky roof over my house. I'm grateful and thankful for my diabetic toes. And then one day you walk down the street and your feet are aching and you see that homeless guy who has a leg amputated. And he doesn't have a foot. And you go, I'm grateful and thankful for my feet. Huh. Huh. I'm grateful and thankful for this leaky roof. And you're walking down the street like I did this morning to the grocery store. And there's a guy sleeping on the bench. Hard metal bench. No pillow. His only possession he has. No change of clothes. He has two packs of cigarettes and a lighter. Cigarette lighter. But no pillow, no blanket. Oh, I'm grateful and thankful for this roof that needs to be replaced. Oh, oh, oh. I'm grateful and thankful for this body. Well, shit, I better start nourishing this body. 
What's this? I don't want to lose my toes. All right. Everyone's talking about green smoothies. How do we do this green smoothies? Put on the green smoothies, put in the green smoothies. Salad a day. All right, I'll try a salad. What veggies do I, I hate? Salads are boring. I hate salads. Well, what can I put in a salad? I'm going to go to YouTube. How do you make your salads more interesting? Oh my God, what is this? You can shave the fennel? What's a fennel citrus salad? What's, you put fennel into a salad? And what is this orange supremes, supremes, orange supremes thing? What, what is that? What is orange and a vinaigrette? What's a vinaigrette? What is that? It ain't ranch? You don't put ranch in a salad? It's a citrus fennel vinaigrette salad -y thingamajiggy thingy. I'm gonna try to do. Step on the scale, Karen. Stepped on the scale. 275. Huh. Look at that. 275. But wait, there's an Oreo. Dr. Vaughn, there's a food taco truck. <laughs> food taco truck, Dr. Vaughn, run by a bunch of topless, shirtless firemen with six packs and pecs and and they have this new oreo milkshake <laughs> dr vong that you can serve with you get for free if you order a taco taco tuesday it's tuesday dr vong <laughs> i have to have taco yo yo sit down meditate okay all right i i got I, I need someone to talk to i need someone to talk to dr vong you get an ap what's an ap dr vong accountability partner what you mean if i have an accountability partner in this tribe no no i want to do this challenge by myself dr vong i don't i i'm shy dr vong i i don't need an accountability partner i'm i'm in a weird time zone i'm special you mean if i had an accountability partner now i can call them and tell them about this taco truck that's run by firefighters what yep karen Yep, that's how that works. That's how that works. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll call this topless. We'll call this taco truck with firefighters talk. <laughs> topless firefighters manning a taco truck talk. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoyed it.